नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर शो परस्पेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टुडे वी टू टॉक अबाउट द बजट सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट व्हिच विल बिगिन फ्रॉम 31st ऑफ जनवरी एंड एंड ऑन सिक्स ऑफ अप्रैल 2023. Now there will be a total of 27 sittings spread over 66 days. The recess will be from 14th of Feb to 12th of March. During this time, the department-related parliamentary standing committees will examine the demand for grants. The budget session will commence with an address by President of India, Draupadi Murmu, to a joint sitting of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha in the Central Hall of Parliament. Finance Minister will present the Economic Survey on 31st of January, which will be followed by Union Budget presentation on 1st of February. Now, this will technically be the last full budget of the present government ahead of the general elections to be held in mid 2024. So, today we'll take a stock of what is expected in the budget session this time around, and what are the key issues on the agenda, both for the opposition and the government as well. Of course, apart from the budget. And for more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of experts. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Mr. K. V. Prasad, who's here with us in the studio, senior journalist, uh, has been keeping a close watch on parliamentary proceedings for uh, uh, quite a long time now. And we're also joined by two members of parliament, uh, Prakash Javrekar, uh, uh, BJP's uh, member of parliament from Rajya Sabha, is with us. Uh, also, Dr. L. Hanumanthaya, Congress's uh, member of parliament from Rajya Sabha, is also joining us. Welcome, both of you, gentlemen, as well, to Sunset Television. I'll quickly begin with you, Mr. Prasad, before I go to. Uh, the uh, members of parliament here and seek their views as to what do you think should be or is likely to be the key highlights of this particular session because this is going to be uh, technically you know the last full budget session of uh, this government's tenure well much is anticipated already you see several uh, reports are coming on on what kind of budget will the finance minister give to the country because there are a lot of hopes and expectations especially the economy has taken a turn for good we've seen all reports and uh, of course the government will give its uh, presentation through the economic survey uh, day before the budget is presented uh, in all people are anticipating that post covid uh, we can expect uh, some kind of all round relief for all sections of society in particular and the government will have some elbow room to do some quality spending more uh, in all all spheres so that's and as you say budget session by very name is important because for the whole year the country's uh, expenditure and revenue is decided and uh, that's the key takeaway from this session okay okay we'll we'll come back to uh, you know the the specifics of that part as well but uh, one more uh, you know interesting aspect of this budget session will be the first address uh, uh, by, to the joint sitting of both houses by the president of india the new president draupadi yes, murmu yes uh, president draupadi murmu will ha address the uh, sitting of both members of both the houses so that is because the first session of the new year is starting commencing and by tradition that has been the practice so we'll see that this time you're right okay okay mr javrekar uh, i'd like to bring you in here you know as uh, mr prasad was saying and everybody uh, is also uh, you know uh, is is on a look out for uh, what is expected in the budget uh, given the fact that this will be uh, technically the last uh, full budget of uh, you know um, the government uh, Uh, this tenure, uh, specifically before the elections are announced uh, in in mid 2024. So, what is it that people of the country can expect? I think we must, at the same time, first see the world scenario. Because Russia and Ukraine war now has completed 11 months and is no chance of stopping immediately. It doesn't seem likely. and therefore the problems of supply chain and short supply and crude prices and many other things will continue world is facing recession europe and america the inflation there is very much so it will have impact on world economy but fortunately and because of modi's strategy for last 8 and 1/2 years we have been seen as the only bright spot in the economy throughout the world uh mm -hmm. and all world economies are either shrinking or growing at snail pace with 2% or uh, maximum 2.5% but india is the only country which is the fastest economically growing country with 7% Uh, GDP growth projected 
for 20 to 23. Uh -huh. So this is very important. And based on that, there is expectation in the country. And what I can see with the experience of eight years of Modi's pattern of budget, he goes into thinking process to a great extent. And now the things are on. Uh, the session, to, even yesterday, he talked to many economists and therefore he takes all views into the stride and then chalks out the main decision process, which finally finance minister brings out in budget. Okay. So I expect that there will be infrastructure push will continue because we have 100 lakh crore infrastructure plan. So last year it was 7 lakh crore. This year also I expect, and that will really improve the employment situation, industry, destination, FDI and everything. Because infrastructure is a key to reduce our logistics cost and being uh, be competitive in the world market. Second will be, more transparency in income tax and taxation okay that is already brought and i definitely expect that uh, it is not just the mere lip sympathy for uh, the action on ground about the taxation is very so there will certain some reforms also be proposed in processes and many other things okay third the welfare last point Third point is that Modi governor, government is known for delivery of all public welfare schemes. So you can expect that more targeted subsidies and targeted welfare schemes for empowering poor will be there. There will be peace, prosperity and industrial development and employment development uh -huh. through infrastructure and policies for middle class and therefore it will be a budget leading to more prosperity okay okay dr anumanta yeah you know uh, what are the opposition's yes. expectation uh, when we're talking about uh, this last full budget of of this government and also you know what's what's your strategy for the budget session no no we wanted this budget to be a balanced budget between the rich and the poor. See, in the country as it is, the few rich owning the maximum wealth of the country, the majority poor are owning the small portion of the wealth. So this has to be balanced by taking measures by the finance ministry. My expectation in this is the inflation has to be controlled for which the actions has to be take, taken by the finance ministers. Uh -huh. But the last eight years, what I am observing in these budgets of the uh, Modiji's government is subsidies are shrinking. People who really need the subsidies are being denied. On account of that, their life has become miserable. And I want education to be given utmost importance at least 6% of the budgetary allocation has to be made for education so that the primary education in the whole country, particularly in government schools, the infrastructure has to be increased and it should be improved. Then only there will be a quality education in the country. The second uh, most important uh, thing uh, what I have observed is implementation of GST is across the country there is a feeling there is an unscientific implementation of GST in the country uh -huh. that has to be slabbed. A slab has to be brought even on food grains and food products. The GST has been implemented, levied in a big way which is not correct in the interest of the majority of the people. So that has to be rationalized and the government has to relook in this case. Second, the salaried class where the majority of the people, majority of the middle class are involved, their minimum slab has to be increased. It is 5 lakhs now, 
I think at least it should be 8 lakhs so that they can get some relief in the middle class and the majority of the people. Okay. So the next important aspect, the last point I wanted to share with you, due to GST and the Corona, lot of MSMEs have closed in the country. This MSMEs has to be rejuvenated to get more jobs to the people of this country, to okay. the unemployed youth. So for that, uh, I expect a reasonable increase the f in the funds for MSME sector and industrial sector so that the unemployed and people who are involved in the MSME sector can be rejuvenated and okay. there will be an unemployment problem can be solved. Okay. 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 Uh, Mr. Prasad, you heard uh, both of them while the government has its strategy vis a vis uh, the budget uh, or the budget session is concerned. The opposition also has its wish list and its strategy as well uh, in terms of major issues uh, which reflect in what, what Dr. Hanumanthaya was saying. But apart from the budget in the budget session, you know, there are other bills as well uh, which are taken up and there are several pending legislations uh, and several others, uh, you know, key uh, legislative issues uh, which have been part of the discussion uh, either in the standing committees uh, or, you know, outside the parliament as well. Data protection is, is one of them. How many do you see, you know, uh, being on the agenda list of the government, uh, ensuring that they get passed during this session? Well, I think uh, we'll yet to hear the priority list of the government because we all know that budget session, primarily the focus of the government of the day always is to get the finance bill through. And that is a process. It takes uh, a certain parliamentary scrutiny, as you also mentioned. Once the budget uh, proposals are presented to the House uh, and then it goes to the committees and the, where they are discussed in detail and the committees report back to the House and then the House takes up discussions according to the demands or grants. And in Raj Sabha we have uh, working of ministries because they don't have the finance power, the power of the purse remains with Lok Sabha. Having said that, I think, but the government obviously will have to look at limited period that it will have post uh, clearances of the budget to try and push some of the key legislative uh, bills which it has to prioritize, as you mentioned, probably data protection bill, for instance, uh, or some other bill which the government is already talking of and mm -hmm. it would not want to bring forward. Uh, so that is something which we'll have to wait and see because there will be a very limited window available for the government to push other legislative agenda. Because by tradition, uh, governments do concentrate to ensure that the finance bill is cleared and everything else falls in place accordingly. Okay, okay. Now, let me let me bring in a very important uh, issue which has been, uh, you know, uh, part of the uh, discussion for uh, uh, quite a few uh, years now. And uh, in the last few days, we heard, you know, presiding officers, All India Presiding Officers Conference, uh, the chairman of Rajya Sabha and the speaker of Lok Sabha as well, both of them raised that issue. That is ensuring smooth functioning of the house. Uh, you know, uh, curtailing as much as possible the process of disruption. And uh, Mr. Javadekar, I'd like to start with you, you know, because uh, the House will have, can, can only function uh, with coordination between both the government and the opposition. So I'll ask both of you, but I'll start with you, Mr. Javadekar. And I'm looking at the figures, you know, uh, as far as 2022 budget session is concerned, uh, in terms of productivity, in Lok Sabha it was 129%, in Rajya Sabha it was 98%, in 2021 Lok Sabha was 114%, Rajya Sabha was 90% uh, and uh, in uh, um, 2020, uh, you know, it was 90% for Lok Sabha, 74% for Rajya Sabha and in 2019 uh, Lok Sabha was 89% and Rajya Sabha was pretty less. So. So, if you look at these figures, you know, it shows us that there is a lot of scope for improvement here. There is a lot of uh, scope for work needs to be done to ensure that there is smooth functioning. What is it that the government is willing to do? Definitely because government is a responsive government. What we need is responsible opposition. And when there is a responsive government, you can take it that we will have very productive session. That is how we hope because Every issue on the earth can be raised which is relevant to India by anybody and that the process is very well. We should not run away from the discussion. But more importantly, as Hanumanta Yaj is saying, there is misunderstanding on GST which I must make it very clear that GST is the only law which has been drafted, rules have been framed and uh, the rates have been decided jointly by all the states and center together. 
centers, finance ministers are there. They were all unanimous decisions. And till today, every month, GST council meets and takes a decision. So that council is, is a freedom to take any important decision. Mm -hmm. So this is first misunderstanding. Second is about wealth creator. There is a global narrative deliberately spread that, oh, wealth is concentrated in few hands. Are they are wealth creators. So wealth creator, because that only gives employment to everybody else. So we should not be seen in the terms of their market capitalization figures and uh, and and mm -hmm. other things. So uh, we must make clear about this. And I can tell you very clearly okay. that uh, even as MSMEs, MSMEs having given two doses of 1.5 lakh crore each, giving them guarantee and our 95% MSMEs are working and prospering because now they have more role and the PIL scheme, production linked insurance scheme also is working very well. Okay, okay, okay. Dr. Hanumanthaya, yeah, you know, quite a lot of issues you mentioned in your first response. Uh, and, uh, you know, going back to my original question, vis a vis ensuring smooth functioning of the house, what is the opposition strategy that you end up raising your issues as well, but not disrupting the proceedings? Sir, the smooth functioning of the house, anyway, lies with the ruling party always. They should have a patient hearing to the voice of the opposition parties. Their differences on political issues are different. See, government, ruling party, always must have one clear direction, there is a BAC, there is a all party meeting before the parliament session starts. But when will be the issue will become aggravated when the government does not hear the opposition voice properly. So I wanted to tell you again and again, the government should have a patient hearing and hear them properly, solve the problems in their meetings and ask for a meaningful discussion. The oppositions are always ready to have a smooth functioning of the parliament. This is number one, sir. Mm -hmm. Number two, I again wanted to answer our uh, friend Jaude Karji, who has said, see, we have collected 27 lakh crore from the fuel and we are buying between $45 to $72 uh, the crude oil. So can we offer to have such a big taxation on our own countrymen. Can we have to do so? So I feel, see, we have sufficiently achieved the infrastructure. I have no doubt about it. But can we have to burden them much more like this? It is not required. Mm -hmm. Even on even on curd, we are taxing so much, which have been used by the poor people of this country. So I request the government, particularly the, the finance minister, revise the GST taxation and if, even if it is reduced, the fuel tax collection from 27 crore to some more lakhs less than that, nothing will be harmed in the country. Okay. We can do well, we can continue well. Okay. So think of the majority of the people, not the minority who are very rich and on them you we don't tax them see we give a lot of rebate to the corporate sector in taxation but we tax the common man in a big way 28 percent slab is applicable to common man more than the corporate sector okay so where are we standing where are we standing okay so that is where my request is rationalize the gst taxation Give some relief to the majority of the people of this country. They should also have a space to have a peaceful living in the country. Okay. That should be a budget and that should be our thinking of budget. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Prasad, you know, uh, you heard uh, both the gentlemen here from the uh, Treasury and the opposition benches, you know, uh, they have their issues. They have their point of view on, on various issues. And uh, it has been a very... Uh, harmonious uh, debate which has been going on on Sunset Television, but uh, 
inside the sansad inside the parliament is the main question which i want to put to you you know how how do you uh, you know see this budget session moving forward uh, given the fact that opposition always has its you know on issues to try and you know corner the government and the government has the responsibility of bringing in legislations getting them passed as well uh, but both sides will have to work in tandem with each other to ensure that there are no disruptions as both the presiding officers have been pointing out time and again well i think vishal uh, we do realize that over a period of time uh, the saying as it goes the opposition can have its say the government will have its way that's the way it has been functioning but for that to happen both the opposition and the government need to work in tandem as you also pointed out and work out how best issues that the opposition wants to bring up for discussion and debate are raised and in what form and fashion because there are enough parliamentary tools available uh, but the question is when they move there is a system and the process kicks in so if it falls in that the presiding officers do decide the bscs do decide all these processes are available so it all depends on how much is the spirit of accommodation that we see over the years how it builds there have been times where there's been a stalemate between the opposition of the day and the government of the day but eventually the floor managers and the parliamentary managers or different political parties sit down and come to an understanding everybody knows i still remember one particular instance when uh, late pramod majan ji was the parliamentary affairs minister and mr pranam mukherjee then was the leader of uh, opposition leader house uh, in rajya sabha he said the first thing he would ask in a meeting you tell me government should tell what are the priorities we will give priority to passage of those bills and then we'll so there was a uh, and i think surely somebody has experience mr jawadekar would have experience similar experiences to share with the viewers so it has been the practice uh -huh. uh, well as is, as you also know and everybody knows the government has the priority to get the legislative agenda through that priority cannot be dismissed the only question is how much of spirit how much of accommodation can the opposition get into the overall pra 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 okay yeah. okay so the spirit of accommodation there from both sides and fulfilling their own responsibilities uh, government has the responsibility of getting the legislations clear opposition has the responsibility of raising people's issues which they seem are uh, fit thank you so much uh, mr kv prasad uh, mr prakash javadekar and dr hanuman tayya as well uh, you know that's all about what is expected in the budget session as we heard uh, all the panelists uh, let's now Wait and watch till 31st of January when the budget session begins with uh, the president's address uh, to joint sitting of both houses in the central hall of uh, the parliament and that will be followed by economic survey and then the most important uh, document that's the union budget which will be presented on 1st of February by finance minister we here at sansad tv will keep on bringing you all the details live and analysis as well till then keep watching thank you